Hello, everyone. I hope that uh, the start of school has gone really well for you, for you and for your families. I hope you're learning lots of really important things, and I hope that you're really enjoying the chance to be together with your friends again. One of the things that most that's most important to me in my life is family. Family is extremely important. And I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about my family for just a moment. If you don't mind, I'm going to spend a time talking about my family. I want to show you some pictures of my family, in fact. I have this picture here. This picture goes back a long ways, but this is a picture of my parents. Now, my this is my mom, and this is my dad, and these are my father's parents. So those are my grandparents, and this is my father's brother, and this is my father brother's wife. So that's my aunt, my aunt and uncle. So that's a picture from my family. That picture was taken a long time ago, and it reminds me about, of course, my parents when they were younger, but also their parents, my father's parents as well. In fact, I have other pictures of my father's side of the family as well. For example, I have this picture, which goes back a really long time. You can almost tell from the hat that my grand that's my grandfather wearing that hat, and the little baby that he's the little child that he's carrying, that's my dad. So this picture is probably almost night, well, it's almost 90 years old, taken a long, long time ago. And those are his, my, uh, my, my grandmother, my father's mother, as well as my father's brothers as well. But on that side, we can go back even further because this is a picture of my father's grandfather, my great grandfather. So that's, uh, that's him. And in this picture here, I have a picture of um, his wife. So that's my great grandmother. So that's my that, my dad's side of the family. I have pictures some from my mom's side of the family as well. This is a picture of my mom when she graduated from high school. That's hmm uh, more than seventy years ago now. So that picture was taken a long time ago. But this is a picture of her when she was younger with her mom, my grandmother, and this was her father, my grandfather as well. So those are family pictures, right? In fact, I even have other family pictures, but they go in the other direction, right? So this is a picture um, from this side. That's our daughter, Catherine. That's our daughter, Elizabeth. And that's their cousin, our niece, Monica. So pictures are a great way to get to know other people's family. Now, sometimes maybe you've heard of something called a family tree. And I, I want to give you guys an assignment, actually, because I sent, uh, as with, I sent an email with the copy of this. This is a family tree. It's a way of writing down who our parents are and our grandparents and our great grandparents, who, are, who our ancestors are, where we came from, what family we came from. And families come, of course, in lots of different shapes and lots of different sizes. Sometimes we have more grandparents or sometimes we have fewer grandparents or sometimes we have lots of brothers or sisters or very few brothers or sisters or aunts and uncles. Families come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. But I want to ask each of you to take some time to fill this out. In fact, I'm going to fill this out a little bit right now just to show you how it's done. So I'm going to put my name here at the bottom, showing you that I'm starting with me. There's my name there at the bottom. You might be able to see the name Kevin. And then I'm going to write down my parents' names. So my father's name is Reginald. I suspect that you don't have any of your friends whose name is Reginald. There aren't very many Reginalds around nowadays. And my mother's name is Barbara. So I've written those names, if you can see those right there above my name. And I can actually write my father's parents' names. So his, my father's father's name, my grandfather's name was William. And my grandmother's name was Gertrude. I suspect you probably don't have too many Gertrudes in your family tree, but maybe a few. And then, so I've wrote, written those just above my father's name. And now I can, on my mother's side, her father's name was William. Curiously enough, he was also a William. And her mother's name was Elsie. So probably not too many Elsies out there right now. So there we go. There's another, another, another generation. And I can actually go up one level further, in fact, at least a little bit, because my grandfather's first name was Charles, and his mother's name was Clara. So those are people that we've shown you pictures of so far. In fact, I've actually have some blank spots here because I don't have any pictures of those folks. And I probably have to go do a little more research to fill those spots in. So I'm going to give you the assignment to try and fill out your family tree. Maybe do that over the next week or so, so that when we sit down and have our next session in a week's time, you'll be able to have that filled out.
But I also want to not just talk about my family. Um, there's a reason why I want to talk about families right now, because I want to talk about the church as the family of God. And in fact, we think about our, our parents and our grandparents and our great-grandparents. That's the family we come from, the family we were born into. But at baptism, we're born into a whole new family, which is the family of God. And we know that God is our father in that family, but we also have relatives, we could say, in that family as well. Some of those relatives have just lived recently, but some of those relatives lived a long time ago. In fact, centuries and centuries and centuries ago. And I want to talk today about one particular ancestor, one of those distant relatives we have in the family of God, and that is a man named Matthew. In fact, I brought this picture of Matthew. Um, it, it's a, it, we obviously don't know what Matthew actually looked like because we don't have any pictures of what Matthew actually looked like. But Matthew lived at the time of Jesus. And Matthew in his life had three different jobs. And the first job that he had was the job of a tax collector. Now, that may not mean a whole lot to most of you, but I brought a copy of this. This is a receipt that some, of someone, uh, something that someone bought at Tim Hortons. And you can see that they bought a couple of coffees at Tim Hortons, uh, actually in Halifax, actually, I believe. And they brought a hockey card at Tim Hortons. And then when, when all those things were totaled up, the price came to $6.77. And yet, when they paid for it, they actually had to pay $7.79 because there was something that cost $1.02, and that's called tax. And tax is something we pay. It helps governments provide the things like schools and hospitals and teachers and doctors and nurses, things that we need to be healthy and strong, things that we need to be safe and secure. So Matthew's job in the time of Jesus was to be a tax collector. But can you imagine if you bought one thing and you paid a dollar two in tax and the next person who came by bought the exact same thing, but they charged them five dollars in taxes or ten dollars in taxes, you would probably think they would probably think that was a bit unfair. And that's the role that tax collectors played back then. There were no really clear rules about what the taxes were. Tax collectors just could get whatever they could They could force people to pay. Whatever they could force, they got. And they gave part of the government, part, part of that to the government, and the rest, whatever the extra they were able to keep for themselves. So you can imagine that tax collectors were not very popular people in their day. In fact, they were really, really strongly disliked. And one day, Jesus was in a city called Capernaum. And he walked into the tax office, walked by the tax office of this man named Matthew. And you can imagine that, you know, people had had to come, they had to pay their taxes. They didn't like Matthew. They were unhappy with him. He was deeply hated. And Jesus looked at him and said, follow me. And Matthew got up and just followed Jesus, left all that behind, left all the tax business behind and became a follower of Jesus Christ. And that's where Matthew got his second job. So if his first job was to be a tax collector, his second job was to be an apostle. And an apostle is a strange word for, for most of us. An apostle is someone who was called by Jesus and sent out by Jesus to help people know about Jesus. So Matthew was one of 12 apostles that Jesus Call people like Peter and Andrew and James and John and Bartholomew and Philip, people like and Thomas, people like that were called to be apostles. And so they traveled with Jesus. They were Jesus' closest friends. They traveled with them all during his ministry, and he taught them and he spoke with them, so that when the time came for him to 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 return to heaven, the re heaven he had left, so that he might be born as a small child and grow up as a as a as a human for us. And when the time came for Jesus to go back to heaven, the apostles would be the ones who would carry on the work that Jesus did. So Matthew was called to be an apostle. So I have a couple of other graphics to sort of show you. So this is a, a picture of Matthew as the tax collector. You can see the coins on the table in front of him. He's taking money from people and some goes to the government, but some of it goes to Matthew as well. So he's called to be an apostle by Jesus. You would see that on that page. But the other word on that page is Matthew's third job, the third job that Matthew had, and that was to be an evangelist. And in fact, if we look at this graphic, we actually get a hint of what an evangelist is, because you can see that Matthew is holding a book. In fact, it's a book about Jesus. 
In fact, Matthew is one of those who took the time to write down the story of Jesus, to write down the things that Jesus did, and to write down the things that, that Jesus said and taught. And so we call that book a gospel, right? And the word gospel means good news. And the word evangelist means good news as well in different languages. So Matthew's job, his last job, was to be an evangelist. He told people the good news about Jesus Christ. He told people the good news that they have new life and new hope in Jesus who lived for them and died for them and rose again from the dead so that we can always have the hope of overcoming all, the, all of those things that frighten us and all of those things that can hurt us and all those things that can worry us. So that's the good news of Jesus Christ, that God loves us in his son, Jesus Christ. And because God loves us in his son, Jesus Christ, there's nothing at all for us to be afraid of. So that's good news in Jesus. So Matthew was a tax collector. Then he became an apostle. Then he became an evangelist to tell us the good news. And so I said some other, other things for you guys to, to work on and to color if you want to color. But I'm also going to ask you to read the story about Matthew when he becomes a follower of Jesus. So I sent a copy of that. It's from the Gospel of Matthew, curiously enough. The Gospel that Matthew himself wrote. It tells the story about when Matthew became a follower of Jesus Christ. And then there's a bit of a, a, bit of, bit of a cartoon story as well that helps us to understand that. So that's our that's our session for today. So what I want you to be thinking about is both your own family tree, who is in your family tree, and maybe write some of those things to fill in some of the gaps on that family tree that we sent to you. So who's in your family tree? But I also want us to be thinking about Matthew as one of those who, in a way, is on our family tree because of Matthew as a follower of Jesus, telling the good news of Jesus, in a sense, helps us to know better who we are as members of the family of God. And in fact, over the next several weeks, in fact, through the rest of this fall, I'm going to introduce us to some of these people who are in our church family tree, our, our, our religious family tree. People like Matthew today, and there's going to be some others each week all through the next series of weeks. And we'll be able to, in a sense, fill in not just our family tree, our, our, our personal family tree, but we'll be able to fill in some of the, the gaps on our church family tree. So I hope you enjoyed learning about Matthew, tax collector, apostle, and evangelist, one of our ancestors on our church family tree. And next week, we're going to introduce you to another member of our church family tree, an angel named Michael. So have fun working on your assignments for this week, and I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Bye-bye.